is gonna be a fun topic. <laughs> So I've recently gotten a lot of requests to talk about LaCroix and LaCroix has been under fire lately is to put it modestly. It's had multiple class action lawsuits. I guess that class action, I don't know, not a lawyer. Lawsuits against their phrasing of natural flavors and natural essence on all of that. So you guys have been asking me whether or not LaCroix is safe or healthy and how it compares to other things like Spindrift. So to clear up the confusion, I'm doing a whole breakdown of LaCroix versus Spindrift, going over the pros and cons and ending it with which one I would recommend. All right guys, if you're new to my channel, my name is Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. On this channel, I'm always talking about best ways to make you feel good naturally. Now, to be honest, I used to love LaCroix. I would have it at least one a day, probably one a day. I don't really drink it as much now for reasons I'll get into. And I also would have Spindrift too. But let's jump straight into it. Let's start off with LaCroix. Now, LaCroix has been around for a while now. And like I mentioned, there's been a ton of controversy around the brand. Back in, I believe it was October of 2018, they had the first class action lawsuit. They are saying that the products weren't actually as natural as was being marketed. But after that class action lawsuit, there was another one in, I believe, January of this year of 2019. And there's been more recently, I believe in March, the CEO saying a bunch of really weird stuff that has gotten him and his company in trouble. But let's first start off with the pros of LaCroix. So the pro is it doesn't really contain any calories. So if you're using intermittent fasting, there's no energy within it that will break your fast. So that's good. It also doesn't contain any sugar, which is good because it's not going to cause those spikes and falls in your blood glucose levels that will cause energy crashes and fat storage and that whole plethora of stuff you don't want. It's also non-GMO, which is also good. It's not organic, but at least it's non-GMO, which means that you're not going to have any type of genetically modified organisms in there, which is always a plus. Now this is where the the gray area between the pros and cons really comes in because with the most recent class action lawsuit, they had an independent party test to the validity of what the people who were suing them were saying about the natural flavors or natural essence. After that first initial class action lawsuit, the third party independent group tested to see if there were any artificial or synthetic additives within LaCroix and they found that there wasn't. But like I said, there's a little bit of a gray area here because that means there's still the natural essence or the natural flavors. And I've talked about this before in the past where just because something says it's natural doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that you want to be putting in your body every day. Most specifically, natural flavors or natural essence can mean a lot of different things. So generally speaking, something can be considered natural if it's derived from like a plant or an herb or bark, some natural substance. But this is again where the gray area comes in because this depends on your own definition of natural. So what they do, it's not like they're taking the bark and infusing it into LaCroix. Instead, they're taking a chemical compound that's within the bark or within the lemon peel and isolating that and using that within the product. So although it is being taken from a natural substance, it's not necessarily natural in the means that it's not in its original form. So natural doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Now there's this whole grass symbols generally recognize as safe that much of these natural flavors or natural essences can fall under, which means that they don't necessarily need to be tested because they've been generally recognized as safe. That also means that they're able to be used in certain amounts while still getting this like seal of approval of being generally recognized as safe to consume. But here's problem number one. A lot of people are having a lot more than just one serving a day. I was looking through a forum. I, I was doing a lot of research on this and looking through the class action lawsuits and I stumbled across this forum somehow of people talking about LaCroix and how much LaCroix that they have. And people were saying that they have upwards of three to 10 LaCroix a day. They're essentially replacing their water intake with LaCroix. So that's where the question comes in is these generally recognized as safe compounds. If you have one, it may be fine, but what about when you have three times amount or even 10 times that amount? And you may be thinking that sounds like extreme of me to say 10 times but if you just do a quick look through the forums on this, you'll see that a lot of people are actually doing this. And with this increased consumption, it makes you wonder what that upper limit is. How many of these can you really have before you exit the realm of generally recognized as safe and enter into this might be a little bit sketchy for your health. So the other problem I have with this is that their cans still are aligned with BPA. A BPA has been found to be an endocrine disruptor. It's also been linked to cancers. And especially if you're drinking a lot of these, you're getting that compounding BPA. Not to mention the fact that if they, if these cans have been sitting out in the sun at all, that means that it's leaching that BPA even further into the drink. So even if you, even if it's been sitting in the sun, but then you put it in the fridge, it's still, the damage is done. The BPA 
has been really leached into that liquid. Now let's move on to Spindrift. You know, Spindrift is one example, but there's a lot of different types of these seltzer drinks, especially the canned varieties. So Spindrift, their whole thing, they used to use natural flavors. Now they only use fruit juice. So obviously that's a benefit in this situation. From what I've seen from their nutrition facts, they're using anywhere between one to 17 calories worth of fruit juice. So it's not very much. So it's not like you're getting high amounts of sugar from these Spindrift cans. And the fact that it doesn't have any natural flavors means that you're avoiding this whole murky realm of what's really in the natural flavors and how much can I really have before it starts to hurt me. Plus it's also non-GMO. And according to their website, they're transitioning away from BPA. So they did used to use BPA, but it sounds like they're transitioning away from that. One caution that I do have on this is that just because something is BPA free, it doesn't mean that it's chemical free. There's a lot of other alternatives to BPA that people are using to line the inner coating of those cans that are just as detrimental as BPA. So just be cautious of that whenever you have anything that is in a can. So going into the cons on Spindrift. Like I mentioned, it used to contain BPA, now going BPA free, but who knows what's really coating the inside of the cans now after switching from BPA. Now, although Spindrift is non-GMO, it's not organic. So you're still possibly getting some pesticide exposure. In fact, you're likely getting pesticide exposure, albeit in small amounts because the juice amount is so small. But if avoiding pesticides is something that you're looking to do, especially with the fact that glyphosate has been linked to cancer, then you might actually be getting exposed to pesticides also with Spindrift. Now, if you are utilizing intermittent fasting, something to keep in mind is that since it does contain calories in the form of fruit sugar, then this likely will also break your fast. So that's where the fruit juice can be a con if you are looking to have it during your fasting period. But if you're having it during your eating window, if you're using intermittent fasting, then that's totally fine. So the question really comes down to which one should you be using? There's still a lot to unpack with LaCroix and I really feel like there's going to be a lot more coming out in the media fairly soon. But just from what we know, I personally always prefer to err on the side of natural because at least we know the types of things we're dealing with where natural flavors and natural essence, it gets a little murky and I would just rather be positive about what I'm putting into my body. Technically speaking, LaCroix has been cleared of the artificial flavors and artificial substances in their product. But like I mentioned, there's still the murky area of natural flavors, natural essence. For Spindrift, on the other hand, it's essentially like taking seltzer water and then just squeezing in some grapefruit or lemon juice or lime juice. But there's still, both of these are still in cans and that's either getting BPA or any other type of toxic compound that can harm your health and harm your hormones. So if you do, if you wanna choose one or the other, I would err on the side of Spindrift just because you at least know everything that's in that and there's no controversy around it and you can be confident in what you're putting in your body. But something even better, if you love to have that seltzer water, the bubbly water, I would rather you have it from a glass seltzer water where it's not coated with any type of plastic that can harm your health or be hormone disruptors. So something that I'll do is I'll just get a bottle of sparkling water and then just squeeze some lemon in it or some lime and it's essentially the same thing as Spindrift. But I know that I'm putting in organic fruit and I know I'm not getting any chemicals. If you're into looking behind the curtain when it comes to the food industry, recommend that you check out this video where I go over the 10 health foods that aren't actually healthy. Also, if you love the science fact information on how you can actually feel your best, make sure you subscribe right here. I come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.